not your typical designer if there is such a thing. Um, but I don't come out of a graphic design background. I come out of a filmmaking studies and animation studies. And then, um, you know, I try to apply that to, to title design. I approach whatever it is, if it's filmmaking, which I consider to be any kind of, you know, uh, time-based visuals, um, I approach it with storyboarding first. So maybe some designers um, come up with, a, you know, concepts and pull imagery together and create style frames and, and, and maybe work, start from a composition and start to sew the compositions together. I think where I might work a little differently is I start with just um, story beats and then I try to fill in the blanks and the visuals of the story beats as I go, which isn't always the easiest way to work, but that, I just happen to think that way. They wanted to do a pop-up book, each environment that, that would sort of tell you something about, about the character. And so I was already starting with uh, a pretty good storyboard that the writer did. And then, you know, taking that storyboard and trying to break it into actually film moments. What are the actual beats of the storytelling? And we went back and forth a lot because, you know, the writers really know their characters. And they, you know, maybe I could see the pilot, but they know where the characters are going you know, all the way down to the end of the season. So I really tried to listen to them and react to their reactions to the storyboards. And th there was a lot of the time spent just going back and forth on the, um, the story reel. When we learn to love, learn. I know we'll One great thing about Spielberg is that he knows very quickly how to set up a character beat. And he said, you know, I want to have a shot with the Alice character where you see a, a um, cockroach scurry on the floor and, and she covers it up with a handkerchief and then she steps on the handkerchief and then she vacuums it up and it's about, um, it really says something about her character, you know, she very neatly like hides the problem and then she stamps out the problem. If I was going to make a movie, I would really think twice as a director of how much complexity I would want to throw into a title sequence. I wouldn't want anything to break the starting moment of the movie. Because um, you can make a great little bit, but if you're going to put it in front of this thing that you've worked on for years on end, you better be the right bit. <laughs> so, um, so when they're done right and they set up the... Uh, emotional space correctly and they set up the tone for the movie, it, that's, that's brilliant. You know, Blade Runner title sequence is very influential on me. It's a simple title sequence. Um, it's all about the music and the tone and small font on the screen and the whole thing is one big ramping up of anticipation and building up um, questions in your mind, what is this world going to be like, where am I going, what's it all about, and then you know you get Los Angeles 2019 or whatever in this amazing moment that um, is, the, is the climax of a sequence that wouldn't have worked if they tried to throw a bunch of graphics at you. Woody Allen title sequence, it's always the same font. But for a Woody Allen movie, I found myself sitting there, and as each title went on, I was reminded of all of his great films, and reminded of, of um, the artist. And by the time that the movie started, I couldn't have been in a better mental state to, to, to watch a Woody Allen movie. So sometimes simplicity is what you need. I think that there's like, there is a little magic that happens in stop motion when everybody pulls together. Um, and I, again, I'm not sure if that's the hand-touched aspect or if it's the real light, um, but I think there's a warmth you get for free, you know, where in, in computer animation you got to really kind of work in the warmth. The animator is literally carving a performance, 
straight ahead, hoping to hit their marks, just like an actor does, um, except they might, it might take them three days to do you know, five seconds or something, hoping to hit their marks, hoping to bring life to the character. And um, so I, I love that uh, tightrope act of stop motion. I, I, I think it's fun to, to set a technical challenge high like that. And it's, it's great to see people rise to that occasion and do something that seems impossible. I have a real push-pull with internet screening. So there's a part of me, when I'm, a big part, when I'm making a film, a test sequence, unless it's for TV, I'm imagining this on a gigantic screen. I'm placing things to be in a periphery. I'm placing things to work um, in that arena. So um, seeing my stuff the size of a postcard or smaller is sometimes a little disconcerting, to be honest. But in terms of bringing an awareness to the art form, uh, and creating new fans of the art form, and getting young people who maybe might not realize that that's actually a job, and the light goes off, and they go, "Oh my God, I want to be a title designer! I totally am in sync with this." I think it's you know that's brilliant. Mm -hmm.